Okay, today I'm going to be debunking Ken Wheeler's, uh, aka Theoria Apophasis's frozen magnetic egg as an idol and as nothing more than a sinkhole for energy, because that's all it is. So um, we're going to go through Ken's video. <coughs> I'm going to point out his uh, huge mistakes of his uh, theory. Um, I'm going to do it on part one and part two of his magnetic egg video because he says several of the same things twice so I just want you to understand that his theory is not my theory and that afterwards I will show you my uh, energy frozen energy water <laughs> and you will see the difference understand this there is no magnet in my glass of water Okay, take a look at our perfect geometric egg-shaped void here. Now the magnet was hanging lower than this, so it's off now because when I yanked it out, the string that it's attached to yanked the magnet up. But you can see our perfect geometric void with our perfect 42.5 degree centrifugal baseline and our centripetal, they call it a bucking formation in the frozen water right here at the center but at the bottom we have perfect 42.5 degree processional divergent centrifugal freeze lines but most importantly look at the center void here perfect not close not kinda close absolutely perfect geometric egg shaped void I will say that this is a pine cone shape because a magnetic field is a pine cone shape, not an egg. It's actually more of a heart shape. But look, this is nature's way of seeing, quote unquote, for lack of a better term, but I will explain fully in the book, seeing magnetism. Well, if he won't, I will. Um, I've already said that energy is getting funneled in like a bathtub. And all energy moves in a scroll, so it goes in like a, a towel that's pointed and comes out like a towel that is flared and twisted at the middle. So what you are seeing is a waveform of energy spiraling out from the inertia line. It does not go into the top or the bottom. It stays around the whole outside of the magnetic egg. and. Um, You'll see further on in Ken's video, he doesn't show you that this goes back into the top, because it doesn't. This is all energy travel. This is how energy travels. There's a main beam and then two arms, two leaders, two one clockwise, one counterclockwise rotational energy fields like arms shoot out from the center. As the magnet hits it, they spill out to the inertia line. They roll down into an Ouroboros torus field, which is what you are seeing. That is energy being pulled in and then thrown around the magnet. It's coming in from the top and it's exiting the bottom of the magnet. And this point here, when spun around, is the directional force going through the magnet. So this is energy going through the magnet. Ken seems to think that ma energy is going inwards. It's not. It's coming down in the top and out of the bottom and those rings spin around and they do not go back into the magnet at all. That is the inertia line rotational fields and they spill around the magnet and they never go back in and you will notice that Ken doesn't show you the lines of passage whereas you can see them on my video and they basically just go downwards in the end. They come around, they cross over and then they start going down. Look at this is a perfect absolutely perfect geometric egg. I performed this experiment over and over again. However, this is the first time I've done it with distilled water, which I knew I'd get better, clearer results. Mine is just tap water or rainwater. I don't even know. But at the very bottom here, we have a perfect centrifugal at the very base. Perfect centrifugal lines and centripetals, I call it a bucking formation, this white column. This is the centripetal part that's coming up to the magnetism. This is merely the vortex coming back out and joining back together along with all the lines that have gone around the inertia line. This is using distilled water and a one inch by half inch N55 neodymium iron boron. And as you can see, as I move the light around, you can see we have a perfect geometric egg. Absolutely 100% perfect. Let me rotate it where you can see it best. 
Here you go, you can kind of see it best here. Now these, you would think these are crack lines right here and here, but they're not. Remember the dielectric inertial plane runs this way. The uh, centrifu centrifugal divergent magnetism leaves here and enters centripetally on the other side. And there he says it leaves one side and goes into the other. Nope, it is a drain hole. And likewise on the other side. Centrifugally divergent, moves around and returns centripetally. So the and that's the difference between my theory and his theory. My energy goes all the way through, same as that glass on screen. That's a heteromach formation. A magnet is merely one point in a heteromach formation, a pinch point of energy. Because we're going to go through my video in a few minutes. Uh, uh, this is probably going to be a really long video. Um, basically showing though several. This is that glass on screen is like loads of magnets all stacked on another because the energy is coming out via every single pinch point of electrical level in the atmosphere. These cloudy lines right here that you see, you think those are crack lines, but if you were able to see closely, they are very fine, misty, etheric lines. That is nature's electricity. Okay. Again, I have to insert the correct interpretation here. It is a Birkeland current tube that is shooting out. This is a waveform. It has a rotation on either side, and then it goes vortex wave, vortex wave, vortex wave. Horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, and they form the waveform, just like a pineapple, a pine cone petal, because that's what a pine cone is, and that's what this is. It's not an egg, and it's not ethereally magic. It is energy flow, double helix, two rotations, and they link together, vortex horizontally, double helix rolling wave horizontally, and vortex vertically, which is why it's all ethereal, because it's vortex wave, vortex wave, and that's how all things are made. Ken's next observation though is absolutely cracking and absolutely spot on about mainstream science because mainstream science lies to you because they are stupid. Why does nature see magnetism like this in any testing media? See uh, magnetism as perfectly symmetrical and charge centrifugally and centripetally and dielectrically. That unfortunately is the only decent thing he said about that. The rest after that is just nonsense and general knowledge. I'm going to zoom in. I hope you can see this better. But I have perfect centrifugal divergent lines and this bucking formation is the centripetal returning where it's cloudy. That's where all the bubbles are concentrated. Again, Ken says that that's the returning beam from the top somehow. It's not. That's the beam coming out. Anyway, I wanted you to see this because it is absolutely divine. What it means is divine. Divinely simplex, divinely logical. Nobody's ever seen this before, and if they've ever seen it, and I've found no examples that anybody's ever seen it, they do not understand it. Okay, I've stopped it there because, um, well, Ken's got the completely wrong idea. He thinks energy's coming out of the magnet and going back into the magnet, which is uh, completely incorrect. Otherwise, he wouldn't have his egg. It wouldn't be possible because there's lines of force outside the egg. So what he's saying doesn't make any sense because he's only got one direction of travel. And his egg is a pineapple and I've got the same effect in water. So now we're going to have a look at what I've done. That, these videos play for ages. So I'm going to just talk over it and uh, explain to you what we're really looking at. All right, I'm just going to talk while we go through this. So this was just a glass of water that I found outside uh, that had frozen solid. And as you can see, I have exactly the same shape in this glass as uh, Ken Wheeler, and there's no magnet inside this glass. There's a couple of uh, sycamore uh, seeds, but we have our explosion out of the bottom. But this is showing all the electrical levels that are in the air and in the water. I set this in the motion of everything that everything that is a body creates its own inertial plane. Any body of water, any seed, any plant, any anything, anything that's made of matter immediately becomes a pinch point for energy and has an inertial plane. This water now has about 15 inertial planes in it and you can see the most magnetically attractive are the thickest. So at some point on this table on, in this glass of water is the inertial point moment, which would be directly in the center of the mass. So 
as we can see from the uh, the video that we have a mass at the top and then we have several levels then a large mass in the middle and then a vortex out which is exactly the same as the magnet we have our bulge dome on top which shows that the earth is round due to this is energy leaving we had a flat planet energy leaving means it pulls up matter so it's no wonder that the poles have lots of natural gas because it's full of bubbles. This is energy leaving the water, which is exactly the same as energy entering the water or entering a magnet, which is why it has given the exact same signature. There is a main beam through the middle and it throws out arms because it's coming down, hits an inertial plane, which is an electrical level or an electromagnetic level, whichever way you want to look at it. They're both the same thing, really. One's just vertical, one's perpendicular. And then it throws out arms, which start at the back here and spin around to the front. And then they cascade down to the vortex at the bottom. There's no energy going back in. It's coming from above and going straight down, which is why it shoots out of the bottom. And if you want to compare pictures, you will find that these are exactly the same. This is the picture I had next to Ken's. So you can see all kinds of rotation in here. That I think I've got, what are we at now? 11 minutes to 36. There's another 20 minutes of this video. And basically, it's just showing the entire construction of the video. In a minute there's going to be a nighttime one. Um, my screen starts going a bit weird but that's due to it being a crappy camera phone and my light sensor must be getting overloaded. But um, you can see everything. This is a heteromac formation which is a plasma discharge which is electrified plasma. So how have I got it in water? The reason I've got it in water is because our atmosphere is electricity and electromagnetism and a body of mass or a mass of a body will create an inertial plane. So there's my drawing showing my pineapple and all the rays coming off it and a pinch point in the center and heart shapes and all sorts because that's how energy travels and every single picture on there could be corresponded to the picture of the video on the left which is a heteromac formation moving through inertial planes. So that's about it really. Um, Ken's theory of a magnet giving energy back to itself is absolutely wrong. All magnets move energy to move matter. If it fed it back to itself, nothing would escape. Nothing would happen. We are bodies within bodies within bodies. We are an electromagnetic system within an electromagnetic system. Electricity within electricity. And so the field shows itself in everything. I mean, just look on the left there at the distribution. It's exactly the same. So Ken L. Wheeler is showing you an idol. He's telling you that a magnet is all-powerful and it's the thing that does things. It is the thing that does things. Electromagnetic double helix energy flow is what moves things. Magnets don't move anything because I've got a glass of water there showing the exact same movement of atoms and, uh, and gas as a glass of water with a magnet in it. So what he says is nonsense because I've explained a theory that allows things to move, be repelled, be impulsed, be expulsed and pass through something because it's a sinkhole. Why is gold not uh, magnetic? Here's the reason. If I have a, here's a parable. If I have a uh, bathtub full of water and I pull out the plug, water goes down. If I put, let's say, a, uh, a plastic cube at the bottom, a solid plastic cube, it will get sucked in. Why? Because its energy content is less than the water moving. I've said that gold, on the other hand, is like a sponge for energy, and that's why people wore it. It made them almost immortal. It gave energy to them like a sponge. If you sit a brick at the bottom of this bathtub, it's not going anywhere because it's already so full of energy that the magnet has no effect on it gold is magnetic if you put a massive amount of uh, magnetism through it which proves my point you have to overcome the energy content to move it which is the same with your body picking up a brick and throwing it you overcome the energy content so gold is not magnetic because it's so full of energy that it won't move down the plug hole it's not affected by it and there we go can't think of anything more to say really other than an experiment without a magnet proves that magnetism is hogwash and that only double helix energy flow is true and correct. 
God is awesome. And he showed all this to me in visions. And I'm showing it all to you. So yes, Ken L. Wheeler is merely a wizard. And I've just pulled back the curtain. His magnet is an idol and has nothing to do with energy travel. It is just a large sinkhole, bathtub plug hole that impulses, impulses and expulses energy. Same as that body of water did. Thanks very much. My name is Lee and I'm a follower of the Christ Jesus and his teachings and his followings. The last 15 minutes are basically just me showing you the design of this so that if anybody wants to they could map it, do whatever. Thanks. Bye.